It's in your pizza, it's in your bread, it's even in your soy sauce. We're talking about gluten. Considered a dietary boogeyman, the protein has been taking a pounding for years. But what is gluten? It's, it's, it's something that's used to categorize things that are bad. You know, calories, that's a gluten. Fat, that's a gluten. That's not exactly true. If you break it down, gluten is an insoluble protein made up of two chemicals called gliadine and glutenine. It's found inside grains like wheat, barley, rye, and some oats. Everything you love about pasta, croissants, bread, all that airiness, chewiness, bounce, spring, elasticity, is all thanks to gluten. It's the glue that holds foods together. So why do so many avoid it? For a very small portion of the population, they have no choice. Namely, those who suffer from celiac disease an autoimmune disease which causes inflammation and damage to the gut. If I eat gluten within about half an hour, I usually have a variety of gastrointestinal symptoms and I usually end up in the washroom and they're very unpleasant. This is what happens inside the body when someone with celiac disease eats gluten. Inside the lining of the small intestine are these tiny hair-like structures called villi. They're responsible for absorbing nutrients. Healthy villi stand straight. When gluten enters the gut of a celiac, the villi lose their perkiness and become flat. Nutrients then just slide right across them and aren't absorbed. Not only does it lead to iron and other nutritional deficiencies, but it also leads to symptoms like stomach pain, bloating, diarrhea, skin rashes, weight loss, bone problems, and even behavioral issues. Once all the sources of gluten are eliminated, the gut heals, the symptoms improve, and the body starts absorbing nutrients normally again. In Canada, an estimated 360,000 people are diagnosed with celiac disease. That's about 1% of the population. An estimated 2.1 million Canadians avoid gluten because they have a non-celiac gluten sensitivity. They also experience painful gastrointestinal symptoms, but do not test positive for celiac disease. Then, there are an estimated 6 million Canadians who have simply decided to follow a gluten-free diet. So, why would they do that? The fad diet started going viral in 2009 and exploded in 2011 when cardiologist Dr. William Davis released his best-selling diet book, Wheat Belly, which argues wheat has killed more people than all wars combined. You know, the success of Wheat Belly is always not driven by my charisma and good looks. It's driven by the success of the program. People lose 30, 70, 100 pounds. Hollywood stars jumped on board the gluten-free bandwagon and the diet took off. This is it. People in fur coats wearing a lot of turquoise eating gluten-free. What I call celebrity science or celebrity influence. And they talk about how they feel on a gluten-free diet or what foods they're choosing on a gluten-free diet. That's a highly, highly influential for the average consumer. But eliminating gluten from your diet, if you don't need to, can actually pose risks to your health. Gluten-free flours are usually very low in fiber. They also lack B vitamins and iron, which are added to traditional wheat flour. And when we go on a gluten-free diet, especially if we don't need to, those nutrients start to fall off. Another popular myth about the gluten-free diet is that it helps you lose weight. But because it's low in fiber and high in sugar, you'd actually feel hungrier and eat more as a result. Take a look at the nutritional facts for these two products. The Oreos, which contain wheat flour, have 53 calories per cookie. Glutino's gluten-free vanilla cream cookies have 60 calories per cookie. The gluten-free food product is also more expensive. The Glutino cookies are $5.99 compared to $3.69 for the Oreos. So why do so many insist a gluten-free diet makes them feel better? Well, the reality is you may feel better, but it may not have anything to do with gluten. It's not because the gluten-free diet has any magical kind of properties. I think it's actually because when people pay attention to what they're eating, if they're eating more fruits and more vegetables because they've taken away gluten-containing baked goods or cookies or other processed foods that contain gluten, Nonetheless, small businesses are more than happy to serve customers looking for wheatless alternatives, but this bakery in Toronto does have to fight a popular myth about gluten-free food. There's still this perception that it might not taste as good or you're gonna be compromising texture, flavor, or appearance. 
In the end, the popularity of gluten-free diets has made life a lot easier for those with celiac disease and gluten sensitivities. As demand goes up, more gluten-free products are available on the market, and they taste less like cardboard and more like, well, gluten. No. <laughs> I can't do it. I think on my nose.